It's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. They kept up a secret correspondence, which makes me think they were suspicious of someone. And did you find out who it was? No, but Von Volner is mentioned. They were planning to make a quick getaway and were looking to hide something beforehand. Have you got these messages? Yes. Go ahead, take a look. I see. I must say... Thanks for your honesty, Louis. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. <laughs> I better keep that to myself for the time being. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And who is this charming character? Manuel Godoy, the Duke of La Alcudia. He's the head of the Spanish government, Monsieur de Richer. He's the one who, in practice, controls Spain. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention, which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if the is not the oh, God. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous, bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France. He's lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maurras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was, preparing to introduce you, as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. 
Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? Hear you speak, it sounds like you and my mother were close. Let's say I hold your mother in high esteem, yes. We were even planning to work together. That's what he was getting at. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? The cat's out of the bag now. More or less, but please do... Do refresh my memory. Yes, of course. Uh, nothing of great importance in itself. During one of our discussions, she spoke of an old book, which might have been of interest to me, and she had agreed to let me have it. A book about what? Ancient occultism. As you are aware, I am a doctor of theology. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? The least one can say is that he doesn't beat around the bush. Sarah never travels without a few books. What does the one you're looking for look like, exactly? It resembles a grimoire. It's divided into seven parts, each one individually locked. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. It's a unique copy. There's only one. The mere mention of it makes his face light up. Well, I'll take a closer look, but I can't promise you anything. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed, my mother and I had a brush with this individual just a few months ago. What about? About an object stolen from the Order a few years ago, which my mother wanted to recover. Ah. Uh, this situation comes as a great surprise to me. <laughs> I got him now. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Birchert was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al-Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. It's Sir Gregory. Correct. You ought to know then, he is not a man who likes to be duped. You are walking on thin ice, sir. You'd better go and check out the painting in Lord Mortimer's study.
Monsieur Bonaparte. May I speak with you a moment? May we? Would you have any more information about the conference Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Meaning? This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. He's undeserved titles, more than ten in just four years, and each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. What do you want, Louis? What do you think of our last guest? Well, I never thought I would get the chance to meet that Hispanic Casanova in the flesh. His reputation is well known. The gentleman collects lovers, including, would you believe it, the Queen of Spain. I doubt that Lord Mortimer invited him for his charm, if you want my opinion. Emily, what can you tell me about the coming conference? Sir Gregory and Lord Mortimer organize this kind of high society meeting every so often in order to consider the world situation. But to what purpose? Well, by bringing together the most influential people from the dominant nations of the modern world, they allow the mighty to discuss matters with calm clarity. There are precedents of armistices being signed at the end of these talks, you know. Talking while holding a glass of brandy makes things easier. You'll see. You're leaving me? Unfortunately, I have things to do. Thank you again, madam. What did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. Now just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey. Looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Let's take a closer look. Dark chocolate beans. Very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society.
Aha, I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great, that's all I needed. Looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller. Come in handy. A painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. From what I know, the fall of Saint Jean d'Acre took place in the summer of 1191. Now, according to this title, it's winter time on the painting, so it can't have been late in the year of 1191. It must be in the first months of that year, probably in January or February of that year. William Alexander Mortimer I, the 12th month of Anna Lucis, 5,190. That's a funny date. The Lost by Paul Rubens. This painting isn't finished. And it looks like Mortimer probably did it. Not bad, but you can't exactly say it's been done in the style of the period. Two dates on this painting, 1154 AD and 5154 AL. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Sarde. Hey, the dates indicate AL and it looks like 4,000 years have been added to our calendar. All oh, that counting system again. The author is Pierre Amade de la Salle, none other than the Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge of Paris. Now I understand why the dates are offset. He's using dates based on the Analusis, year zero of the Masonic calendar, by adding 4,000 years to the Gregorian calendar. I thought that that calendar starts in March. The Crusades took place not long after the year 1000. Here all the dates say 5000 and something. I'm guessing this dating system begins 4000 years before the calendar that we use. Yet, I'm getting the feeling that there's something else, another small detail, but, but what is it? The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. What have we got here? Well, it looks like a model, a model of a lock. It's as if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it.
Open sesame. <laughs> Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. Shows the forces present in Africa. This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns, even for Mortimer. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Giham Trimor. Hmm. He says, It is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in. And goes on, There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? This shows the forces present in America. This is my mother's writing. I've picked up her trail. What is she up to? Obviously she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but but where? The only clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I've absolutely got to find out where it came from. shows the forces present in Europe, it's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants. Thank you. 
locked. map of the Orient, indeed. Preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Something strange about this table. The little surgeon's perfect collection. Looks like obsidian or onyx must weigh a ton looks like obsidian or onyx must weigh a ton these are feathers pigeon probably a skeleton by the name of Gustav if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by Mortimer's given a name to his anatomy skeleton that's morbid. Oh, the right hand is missing. for writing the hoeing pigeon messages. An iron mask. I wonder who it's for. Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. Some goat skulls, chicken legs. Now we all know what that's for. I'm a little surprised at Mortimer. And it seemed as the type to be organizing little pagan parties, invoking occult powers, and dancing naked under the full moon. I'm more used to seeing cheap charms like this sold by charlatans in Pré Saint Gervais. Look, a pack of tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? <laughs> that would surprise me. It is a typical draw in a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance, that announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot, which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the emperor evokes a future full of power and stability.
chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. Am I seeing things or is that an actual von Leeuwenhoek microscope? Incredible. Mortimer really is at the cutting edge of science. Even at the order, it took us ages to get one of those. Oh shit, how am I going to get out of here now? <sighs> this looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Whoa, whoa. If the grid closes a bit more every time I enter a wrong date, I'd, I'd better not mess up again. These cylinders are driving me crazy. I got something wrong with my positioning? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Well, better not dwell on it. 